see. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Zion Lutheran Church in Camas, Washington, as we join together on this, the fourth Sunday of Easter, as we continue in the risen life, risen and abundant life given by our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, a few announcements as we begin this morning. Just a reminder that there are a number of things in the Zion Weekly that was sent out via email on Friday and also uh, in the blue insert in your bulletin. It gives uh, a lot of information about the things going on uh, in our community, uh, in our faith community, uh, both this week and things to look forward to uh, in the near future. So please be aware of those things. Uh, I'm not going to go through uh, many of them, any of them today, because today, for whatever reason, there's enough things running through my head. I'm going to forget something, and I don't want to do that to anybody. So I'll just not say anything, just leave it to, look at this today. Because I don't want to do that to anybody. Because that's not, that's not the point. So, uh, so please take a look at that, uh, either, either, either through email or paper, and that will give you a good idea of the things going on in our faith community and ways that you can be a part of things uh, in, in mission and ministry, in word and in deed. So I'll leave that for you. Uh, and so uh, I would invite you to please take a moment to uh, reflect upon the abundant life that Christ gives us out of love and grace as we continue uh, in resurrection alongside him. Invite those who were able to please rise as we continue with the order of confession and forgiveness, which there is the first line is found at the very bottom of the inside cover. Uh, so that'd be page one of our bulletin. So just make you aware of that. I'll begin with the one line there and we'll continue on into page two. We begin this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. So we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins... God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. For Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for us and for His sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by His authority, I therefore declare to all of us the entire forgiveness of all our sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue this morning with our opening hymn, uh, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart, found on page 2 of our bulletin, or number 484, which is in the back of the red hymnal that's in the seat pocket in front of you. We continue this morning, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We'll continue with the Kyrie, followed by now the Feast of Celebration. Our hymn of praise begins on page three of our bulletin. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy. people here who have come to give you praise for the strength to live your word. Let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Help, save, and defend us, O God. The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us in your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue this morning with our readings. The first reading this morning comes from the fourth chapter of Acts. On the next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name do you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel, that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified and whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, 
the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Word of God, word of life. The responsive reading this morning is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in the pastures and leads me in the sides to the waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. The second Bible reading this morning comes from the third chapter of 1 John. We know love by this that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if your heart does not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Word of God, word of life. Jesus says in the presence of his disciples and others gathered around him that I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and run away. And the wolf comes, snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I, may, and I lay my life down for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. For I have received this command from my Father. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and I'll invite those young in age, young in heart, to come and join Destiny here for our children's message this morning.
I think it was for middle schools, high schoolers. So when you're in middle school, we, you can come. <laughs> um, yeah. So last week we talked about what? Do, does anyone remember? What? What we talked about last week? King, King David. David. Amen. What do we say that God looks at? The heart. the heart, right? He doesn't look at what you wear, the shoes. He looks at your heart. Yeah, he looks at your heart, right? Yes. So we learned last week that David got anointed to be king. But since he was anointed, it doesn't mean that he's king yet, right? He's been anointed to be king. He's going to be king in the future, but he's not like crowned king yet, right? So shortly after David got anointed to be king, he actually got the opportunity to be under King Saul courts, like to soothe his headaches, right? So King Saul, who is the king, um, he started to get really bad headaches. Have you guys ever had a really bad headache? You've never had a headache? Wow. Blessed. <laughs> Blessed. Um, if you've ever had, okay, imagine a tummy ache then, yeah. right? You have a really bad tummy ache, a really bad headache, and it won't go away, right? Yeah. Nothing you do will make it go away. It's just there, and it's bothering you, and it just hurts, and you're grumpy, and... I think my mom had headache. Yeah, so she can tell you how, how much it's awful. <laughs> um, so King Saul was having headaches but it wasn't going away. And so he asked um, the people around him, he said, can you send someone to maybe play music for me, right? Yeah. So the headache can go away. And so God had actually given King David, well, the soon to be King David, he wasn't King David, right? He gave David the opportunity to hang out with Saul, King Saul and play music for him. Do you guys know what a lyre is? No lyre? Have you ever seen a harp? A harp? No. A harp? Okay, well, it kind of sounds like a harp, but more like ancient. Hmm? It's a hand, yeah, that's a perfect description. It's a hand held harp. Austin is great at this. <laughs> future, future youth leader. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's a hand held harp, right? But it sounds a little bit different. So imagine like a twang, right? I want to say it's like a, in my mind, it's like a country harp, almost. You know, if he's, harp is classical, I think a lyre is a country harp, you know? It's like a banjo, but a harp, I don't know. That's how it sounds like to me. <laughs> um, so King David, I mean, David had a lyre, right? And so he would play for King Saul and his headaches would go away, right? So he used the power of music, right? To soothe King Saul's headaches and they would just go away. But it wasn't just the power of music. Guess what else it was? Does anybody have any guesses? The heart, yeah. But what else? Yes, the power of God, right? So God had given David the ability, right, through his music, right, to soothe King Saul's headaches, and they would go away. And so what ended up happening is King Saul and David, who's gonna be the future king, but King Saul didn't know this, right? He didn't know David was going to be the future king. He had no idea. It was done kind of in secret. Um, they became good friends because Saul was in pain, right? And you know, being in pain is not fun. It's not fun at all. It hurts, right? And you need friends around you to bring peace, right? So what we're going to learn today is that David played music and he pleased the Lord. And by pleasing the Lord first, right, it brings peace onto others. Can we learn that? Yes. When we please the Lord, what does that what does it do? It brings peace to others, right? So we're gonna pray and I really want you guys to close your eyes for a minute and imagine all the tools that God's giving you, whether it's music, art, dancing, it could even be science. I know Miracle's gonna be a scientist. He's been saying a lot. Um, all the tools that God's given you, imagine how you can use that to bring peace to others around you. Hmm. We can bring peace to others. Lord Jesus, we just wanna thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy, God. We want to thank you so much that as we're learning about the soon-to-be King David and King Saul and how you would take away King Saul's headaches, Lord, 
Lord, you also take away our headaches, not just of our mind, but the headaches of our heart, God, that you see our heart, but you also know how to heal it. And that you've also given us the power to bring peace and to heal those around us, Lord, through your name, Jesus. And we wanna give you all the glory and honor and praise because you deserve it. And we love you so much. And thank you for being our best friend. Um, yeah, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Do I have it? Yeah. Grace and peace to you, my friends, from God our Father and our risen Savior and Lord Jesus, who is called the Christ. Amen. So it might be a little uh, interesting why the Good Shepherd uh, verse section of, of Gospel of John is here after Easter. When Jesus is going along in the Gospel of John talking about a number of things and, and saying all these wonderful pronouncements um, and giving them all of this wonderful imagery and information. It's probably because of the line where Jesus says, you know, I have the power to lay down my life and I have the power to take it up again. Because he's echoing what uh, in our calendar has just taken place of Easter. And laid down his life on the cross and took it up again on Easter when the stone rolled away. But why does he do such things? He does such things out of love for one another, for love of those uh, to bring those who are outside of the flock, if you will, into the flock, and, and so to go get those that the wolf has taken away. And so those, those images uh, really fit well for Jesus' day and also fit well for us as well. But one thing that Jesus doesn't speak, speak of directly, but I think speaks to, is his responsibility of love and power. Because he mentions both of those uh, quite a bit in this section of John's gospel. Uh, along with him laying his, putting his life down or laying his life down, uh, you get the inference that he does this out of love, and then he speaks in, in terms of power. So I want to say, um, I want to get this right, so I make sure I got it on my phone. So please forgive me for a second, because I want to quote it. I want to quote it accurately, because um, my wife has told me that I haven't done that recently, uh, that there's a few things I've quoted that I've gotten a little bit wrong. So there you go, Megan. I get it. It's just for you. Uh, in, uh, in, the, in the convention of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in 1967, uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. says that power without love is reckless and abusive, and that love without power is sentimental and anemic. I think that speaks a great deal to what Jesus is doing and how he is coming uh, in love, but with power to the people, to Israel, to the disciples, to all whom he's gathered. So I want to sort of talk a little bit about the second part first of that, that uh, love without power is sort of anemic and, and ah, dog got it. I know, I'm going to probably do this a few times. I'm probably going to do this a few times today. It's sentimental. That was the word I was looking for. Sentimental and anemic. Um, you know, sort of during, uh, recently, there's been sort of, a, I don't want to say a pushback, but a, a deeper conversation about those that say, oh, my thoughts and prayers are with you for whatever reason. And people have seen sort of through that, that, that a number of folks, I'm not saying all, but there's been enough that have said this just so that they'll look good. Just so they can say, oh, I've said, I've, I've said, and I've thought, and I've prayed about it, and that's where it ends. It doesn't go into, as letter First John said this morning, of that we not only love through word, but we love through deed and through truth. So there comes a bit of action that comes along with words. And for those that simply leave their love in words without actions, that's where the sentimentality and the, the anemic, because it doesn't, there's no substance to it. It needs a little oomph, right, for those that are anemic, you know, you need a little oomph, and that's kind of where that comes from. 
Second part, uh, sort of, so that's sort of a churchy way of thinking about this. Uh, the first part of uh, that is uh, that power without love can be abusive and can be caustic is sort of that, that, that old line, again, I'm not saying that, it, that it's for all people, for all things, but an analogy can be when somebody just sits there and puts the law down and says, that's the way we've always done it, and leaves it at that. That that's the, the end all, be all explanation for everything, for life, universe, and everything in it, in it is that's the way we've always done it. Because that gets into no, no, no different types of thought, no wonder about how, how things have maybe moved or, or changed in, in ways that could be helpful, beneficial, more efficient, more authentic to who the people of God are now. Okay? So in those kinds of ways, okay, think about what Martin Luther King Jr. says in, in those senses. Now, does Jesus really do either of those two things? Does he go to either of those two extremes? of laying down the law of saying, this is the way it is and it shall be no further. Kind of like the, you know, Yul Brenner as Ramses of, so shall it be written, so shall it be done. You know, and sort of leave it at that. No. But does Jesus simply walk through town or, or walk through this, this point uh, and, and simply gives this imagery of the good shepherd and the sheep and the wolf and leave it at that? They simply present this image and say, that's it, it. That's all I need to do. No, because we, we understand that he will have actions that will go along with these words that he says. And he says, I will lay my life down for the sheep. And he does it. And he says, I will have the power to take it up again. And he will do it. So it is that word and deed in truth that has love alongside it. My friends, it is very difficult to be consistent in love, to have our words so consistently uh, meet our deeds. And a lot of that has to do with us as humans. We're broken, we're sinful, we fall short of the glory of God. You've heard me say often, I hope often enough, that, you know, saying that, that, that the Apostle Paul speaks of, you know, I do the things that I shouldn't, and I don't do the things that I should, and I know it, and yet I can't help it, because I'm broken, I'm sinful, I've fallen short of the glory of God, he says this in Romans. And so it is difficult for us not only to look at each other with grace and with love, it's probably equally difficult to look at ourselves with grace and with love. Because we, above all, know what our potential is, what we are capable of in love. But we also know what holds us back, right? We also know that maybe we don't have enough energy that day, or we don't want to expend the thought, or we're afraid, or we're a little angry and frustrated, or any number of reasons why we don't step out in love. Or whether we want simply the, the warm snuggles and the unicorns and rainbows of love, or we want to lay the hammer down on somebody just because we want to. Right? We all do that. We have the example of Jesus, who, who brings this wonderful image of the shepherd and the sheep. And as we're trying to figure out where we are in the midst of this, what part of the sheep are we? Are we the ones that stay behind? Are we the ones that Jesus is going out and getting? Are we the ones who the wolf has taken away? Forget all that for a second. Forget all of that. What I want us to focus on for today, for right now, for this season of life, is that all of the actions that Jesus is speaking of with the analogy, with the imagery of shepherding, it's all everyday stuff that shepherds deal with. You may or may not know that, because shepherding is not something that is done a whole lot around anymore, and that's okay. But everything that Jesus is speaking into or lifting up, of defending the flock, 
of gathering them together, of making sure they're all one flock and heading together, going out and getting those that, that sort of run away and do their own thing. It's all everyday stuff. And Jesus says, I will go, I go do that out of love. So as you go do your everyday stuff, God, God in Christ comes to you and comes through you in love. That is what we are to do with one another. Maybe one day we're the one to point out some of the sheep that have been, that got to go do their own thing. I'm saying, hey, y'all, come on back here. Or say, hey, we need to go get them. They're, they're kind of off, you know, doing their own thing. Or say, hey, so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so have been kind of taken away by the wolf, whatever the wolf is. It could be lots of things. Or maybe we're supposed to actively, actively pray and be mindful of their presence or their lack of presence and reach out to them in love. But it's in the everyday things in which love comes, in which love is. So many of us expect God's love in Christ to come in these big aha moments of the light shining down and the angelic choir around us, you know, the oh, no, no. In, in all my years of doing this, I've never seen that. I've never experienced that. I bet you haven't either. You haven't seen the holy light coming down, the, the clouds part, and the, the sunbeam comes down. And the, the, you know, you kind of look at me like I got three heads, so you're kind of with me on this. If you haven't seen that before, okay, good. Because where does love come? In the everyday in the schedules, in the meetings, in the grocery runs, in the car trips, in the fact that you're kind of frustrated with kids, spouse, coworkers, whatever. That's where love comes. That's where mercy and grace meet us. It's not in those special moments in which we say, okay, God, I'm ready to be loved and ready for, no. It meets us where we are at in the everyday. In those things that, in, in, in the routine that we have. That's where love comes. That's where Christ is. That is where mercy and grace meet us. And we, as the people of God, are called to share that with others, are called to meet others where they are at, have mercy and grace come through us to others. It might be that we put aside our own agenda or our own expectations or our own stuff for a moment to lay down our life, in a sense, for others. That is also love as well. So there's not one end-all, be-all of say, you do this and this is love. You show that and people will know God's love. It's not how it works. Because we all have individual and unique gifts to show God's love. So I can't say with one big, bold pronouncement that we are to love exactly this way, at this time, at this place, in this manner. You love with the gifts that you have. I love with the gifts that I have. And together... Individually and together, we show God's love and mercy and grace meet us where we are at. We go forth and show that to others as one flock with one shepherd. Amen. Give Gary a second to get back up to the organ. I'll invite those who are able to please rise as we continue this morning with the hymn of the day, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. The words begin on the bottom of page six 
of our bulletin. It is also uh, hymn 502 in the back of our red hymnal in the seat pocket in front of you. As we continue this morning, the King of Love, my shepherd is... Continue our worship this morning by confessing our common Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 7 of our bulletin. We come together in trust and in hope, confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son 
who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We go forth rejoicing that Jesus is risen and that love has triumphed over fear. We now pray for the church, for the world, and for all those in need of good news. Shepherding God, gather your church whenever we wander from you and one another. Empower our church and ministries around the world to worship and to serve alongside global companions as equal partners and co-workers in the gospel. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, preserve the health of biomes and ecosystems. Inspire scientists, researchers, conservation organizations, and all people entrusted with the task of caring for your good creation, that we may be better stewards of the world around us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Almighty God, lead nations and communities to share resources, cooperate in solving conflicts, and listen to the wisdom of indigenous peoples. Help all those with power to share it and to use such power for good. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, protect the very young and the very old, those living without housing, victims of domestic abuse, and all who live with chronic illness or compromised immune systems, especially those we remember aloud or silently within our hearts. Guide communities to actively care for people who are vulnerable. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, help this and all communities of faith to listen for your voice. Call us away from things that distract us from following you. Invite us to more deeply love and serve people who are lonely, isolated, and on the margins. God of grace, hear our prayer. Living God, we give thanks for our ancestors in faith. Strengthen us to share the good news in our own day. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray as we trust in your abiding love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. May the peace of the risen Christ be with you always. Please take a moment to share a sign of peace with those whom you are surrounded with this day. Peace be with you.
as we continue this morning with the offertory prayer. Offertory prayer is found on the middle of page 8 of our bulletin as we pray together. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May these gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. We ask this, Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For it is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in his dying has destroyed death, and in his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with the earth, sea, and all their creatures, Angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
Mighty, merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you send to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, preach good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. We remember on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, those whom he called friend, those whom he loved. And he said, all of you take and eat, for this is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving, giving thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant which is in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. So we remember, therefore, his death, his resurrection, and his ascension. We await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord. Unite the wills of all who share in this heavenly food body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, both now and forever. Amen. As we continue in worship this morning, we pray together the prayer our Lord taught us with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. So we continue this morning with Holy Communion with the ushers invite you to come forward. Please come through the center aisle. Take a space at the rail around the altar which you may kneel or stand as you choose or as you are able. You'll see bread for myself. There are also gluten-free wafers available for those who wish for that. Please let me know. I'll be honored to share that with you. Once you've consumed the bread, you'll be handed a cup from the tray. Our default will be for wine, which is the dark liquid. If you wish for non-alcoholic, which is the, the lighter liquid, please, as the bulletin invites, raise your hand or finger when they come by, and that will be um, given to you. And there'll be a basket following that, which you may place your cup into. Uh, after consuming the elements, if you wish to stay at the rail for a moment of prayer and or reflection, you are welcome to do so. We ask that you, when you return to your seats, to please do so by the side aisle uh, so we keep things moving efficiently as possible. If you wish to join us for communion and are not able to come forward, please let the ushers know. We'll bring communion to you where you are seated. We're here at Zion Lutheran Church and within the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, we have a policy of open communion in which all who wish to may come forth and join us in the Lord's Supper. For the Lord calls out to all and all can hear his, have the ability to hear his voice and to follow. So if you wish to do that, you are welcome to join us at this table. For those that are joining us online, however and whenever you view this, this is the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ that is shed for you. Come one, come all, for the shepherd calls you to join his flock, with his flock.
those who are able to please rise. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body of blood strengthen, keep, and unite us both now and forever. Amen. We pray the post, together the post communion prayer found on the top of page 10 of our bulletin. As so we pray together, shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you both now and always. Amen. We'll conclude our worship this day with our final hymn, Have No Fear, Little Flock. Uh, words are found on page 10 of our bulletin, or also hymn 764 in the back of our red hymnal. As we conclude this day, Have No Fear, Little Flock. his voice. Let us go forth as one flock with one shepherd as we go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.